the tone on tone plaster relief decorative finish with a metallic shimmery glaze is probably one of the most subtle exquisite finishes that I can teach you you want to start out knowing your space you're working in the dimensions because you're going to relate that to your drawing board make sure you measure out points and have a nice balanced accurate decorative once you sketch that out you're going to lay a plastic architectural paper down on the design and trace it with a sharpie then you're going to take a wood burning tool uh, which i use to draw right over which is actually burning over the sharpie marks be very conscientious of transitions of the decor you don't want to burn out a whole space and then not have the stencil you need to leave little bridges to hold delicate areas together so you will learn that real fast um, but think of that ahead of time so you're going to burn and lift off the plastic according to your design and you will see as it reveals itself you've got this amazing stencil be very gentle with this it is uh, it, it depends on your intricacy of your design but it's very easy to rip and tear so as long as you have good structural bridges in those delicate areas you should have no problem This particular project is in a high ceiling. So we're using scaffolding and it's quite the challenge because the ceiling is angled. This tray, as most trays, have angle sides. This is a very steep angle side and my stencil does not want to lay flat. So I'm taping it uh, in areas just to keep it as tight as I can for the plaster. the fact that your plaster is firm is going to work to your advantage here um, it will help hold itself up so to speak but you'll figure out real fast how to maneuver yourself around these stencils they're they're not easy because of the angle but and ceilings are just not easy because then it's falling down on you but just use your tape and um, we're going to use simple wall mud very simple plastered wall mud and you're just going to skim it on I'm using a putty knife and making sure that this plaster is nice and thick remember you're going to be looking from the ceiling 20 feet up high in the ceiling to see it so it cannot be a shallow relief you want to build this on at least a fourth of an inch thick so you're, it's going to be time consuming this is where you're going to spend some time just layering it on and you figure out real quick how to manage it it's just simply holding the stencil on and tight and then moving forward after you get that plaster on nice and thick you're going to have a lot of plaster on this stencil that between each section you are going to have to clean it and again it's just this is part of the most time consuming efforts in this whole effort but it's certainly worth it so you can see as i'm pulling this off the ceiling here uh, <laughs> it's heavy look at the weight of that plaster on my stencil it just wants to it, it's heavy it just wants to pull it right down to the floor i'm uh, hanging on and handing it to my assistant who is going to take it and thank you so much assistant for cleaning that for me while I just kind of perfect areas some things seeped in I'm going to wipe that up 
and um, you know some things have spikes on it where the putty knife just kind of peaked it and I'm gonna smooth that down but essentially it is gonna be a little rough and that's okay I mean I'm going to paint over this so as long as I have my decorative in a nice thick relief I'm quite happy so you can see where I've started uh, being on scaffolding we're doing sections at a time that is why I didn't do the entire trim we're taking this gold ceiling and we are going to gray gray is what's in right now silvers and gray so this baroque gold is out and we are knocking that out with the trim has a nice solid gray right now I'm just kind of getting some interest to that trim I'm peaking it with a cream color and I'm just kind of kind of like a sand back edging I'm just peaking hitting it organically I'm not doing a solid line I'm just kind of dashing that around it's going to highlight the peaks and you'll appreciate it more from the ground view and I'm doing this while my plaster is drying you can see behind the plaster is still the gold finish and I'll be painting right over all of that but for now that needs to dry so I'm going to get everything done that I can before we have to move that scaffolding and that is why I'm doing it in odd little sections in each section of the ceiling so continuing on just peeking out as much of that uh, trim molding as I can reach I'll reach is get as much done as I can reach on that scaffolding also straight ahead we have a medallion and you can see I've painted it gray and I've peeked that out with a nice cream color to highlight the reliefed areas and now I'm painting that gold ceiling with a nice light gray I'm coming in with a shimmery taupey now this is a mix this glaze is a metallic blend of gold and silver 50 50 so it's looking a little gold in this light but we didn't want a cold gray we wanted this in more of a pewter so washing this over it's a uh, 50 percent glaze so it is translucent it's not going to you know block out any of those nice peaks but it will warm it and I'm going to continue painting my ceiling my decorative plaster is dry here so I'm just painting that base color right over it it is a thick relief so while I'm rolling it I'm going to have to use a brush to cut in and you can see at the peak of that ceiling there where I'm going to come back and cut in with a cut in brush but again I'm on scaffolding so I am going to just roll and hit everything I can reach in that particular corner Alright, so everything is base painted that I can possibly reach on that scaffolding. So before we move it, I am going to need to burnish the glazing over what I just painted. So what I'm mixing for the sheetrock areas that are, a, if you noticed, is a much lighter gray than the trim. I'm going to mix up a batch for that separately than the trim it's still going to be a metallic silver and gold mix but I'm going to go a little bit lighter on the gold here because you know that is such a light base that uh, you know it requires a lighter 
more gray um, glazing. So again, 50% glaze to paint ratio. But my ratio of my gold and silver is slightly altered. I am going a little bit heavier on the silver. So now I'm burnishing this new glaze mix right over the decorative and all the painted area. That entire panel is going to be burnished with this metallic glaze. I am basically scrubbing it into that paint. I am scrubbing it on the wall. It's uh, really that simple. I hold my brush at, I would say, a 45 degree angle and this is a four inch purdy brush. It is the only brush that I've found that does not tangle when I do this. A lot of them will get knotted up and um, I just can't use it anymore. This keeps a nice uh, flat edge so I can get in and cut in a sharp line all around the molding and uh, maintain that scrubbing motion. It just works. I don't know why, um, but it's as simple as that. I'm just scrubbing it in in organic motion. I don't, if, if you do it in like circles, you're going to get little donuts up there and you don't want little hues of donut shapes. So you want to scrub it. You want to scrub it. Think of organic puzzle pieces. You're going to kind of uh, scrub it one way and to the right and then to the left and overlapping. And you'll figure out real fast how to work with glaze and get a nice finish. When you go over the relieved areas, you want to make sure that you are hitting absolutely every indentation. You do not want to leave anything without glaze. You can see when the glaze collects in that relieved area or the, the undercut of the relieved area, it almost, it antiques it. So it almost highlights the it actually does highlight the whole relief area. It, it creates kind of a shadowy effect underneath it. So uh, make sure that you take the time and, and really hit it at every angle, hitting every groove with that glaze. And now, after four days of much effort, much work, our beautiful, tonal, monochromatic, plaster relief decorative ceiling is finished. All those layers are so subtle, you would never know how much work this was, but it was so worth it. A ceiling such as this requires walls to do it justice. So for our walls in this room, we decided to use the same base coat as the sheetrock up in the ceiling and the same silver gold blend of glaze burnished over it. It is absolutely congruent but without the decoratives, without the molding painted likewise, it's not going to compete with that ceiling. It is going to be congruent and enhance that ceiling uh, without speaking louder than it, so to, so to say, um, without competing with it. 
So this wall is going to be luxurious, like the ceiling. And being that it's still in those same tones, absolutely congruent and monochromatic still, uh, but it's quiet. We're going to keep these walls nice and quiet. With the master ceiling and walls finished, this master suite would not be complete without a finished master bath and water closet. So we continued this color scheme into the bathroom. We kept the exact base paint of these walls, that light gray, with the same shimmery, beautiful glaze uh, burnished over it. But we had to change it up a little bit for the master. So here we have decorative relief, also with plaster on the walls, but we overlaid it with a crinkled silk. This technique is a technique unto itself, and that is for a later time to learn. But for now, just look at how absolutely stunning this flow is. Mm -hmm. 